All right, well, we got a little problem here today. Turn the sink on, nothing. It's never good. So a uh, couple things we got to do. First, we're going to check our breaker box, see if maybe a fuse blew. Hopefully that's it. Solves that problem. I doubt that's the case. Next, we're going to go over to our expansion tank and where the well water comes in, and we're going to check our presser switch. We'll trip that a couple times, see maybe that's just hanging up or... Contacts are worn and corroded. Fingers crossed that's what the problem is. I don't think that's what it is. I have a feeling we're going to be pulling our well today. And it's a really miserable doom and gloom kind of day. But, you know, of course that's when this stuff's going to happen. So, well, that's I guess what I have to go out there and gear up to do. And it's most likely uh, either the pump lip burned out itself or we chafed a wire inside the casing. <sighs> I'm going to probably lean against a wire chafing in the casing because that happens quite often around here and pumps are really deep. So, uh get on that and start pulling and have to figure out a contraption to get this thing out of there. Basically unscrewed these bolts. We'll pull this cap off of here and we have these three wires. Now this is 220 running through there so there's a good amount of snot in that. Now you have hot in both red and the black. The green is the neutral or ground or whatever. And uh, well, we hook up our trusty little voltmeter here. It's really kind of tricky to film this and hold this and do this at the same time. Maybe I can uh, move this a little closer here. So we can see if this wiggles and jiggles. All right, so I should be grounded there. Let's see if we have power when I touch that. Yes, we do. So all I did was I grounded the green one, and now I'm touching right inside the black. And that gives us power there. That's showing 110 there. And we have power there. So what that is telling us is we have power to our pump and our well, which means it's not working. So somewhere down there is the problem. So if you look about three feet down, it's really hard to see. There's a little brass thing. It's going to be on this side. That's called a pitless adapter, and it has a threaded spot on the top. And you stick a pipe down there with some threads on the end of it, screw onto that, and then you can hook, and that will grab the top of the well and be able to pull that out. Now this one's 420 feet deep, and it's a 600 foot well, so it's a lot of stuff down in there. Let me cover this and no stuff goes in this well. But uh, ugh, not what I want to do is trying to pull this out of here, and I don't have room right now. There's just stuff in the way. Oh, it's going to be a disaster. So I went inside and I shut the breaker off, so now I know I have no power. And I'm just testing to make sure, because I don't feel like getting zapped by a good 220 line. So I'm showing no power at the moment. All right. Okay, just making sure everything's the right breaker, because you never know sometimes. So now I can disconnect my wires, but first, there's quite a bit of tension on these wires still. There shouldn't be this much. I see a whole coil of them. Why is that pulling like that? Oh, there we go. That was awfully bound up in there. But now I can get to these. I wonder, make sure that's not, and it's definitely still connected. Not very well, but maybe I'll clean that up and make sure that that doesn't suddenly work before I go ahead and pull this. But you can almost see that brass piece down there right in between. Now that's what I hooked into, and I have this fancy tool. Made this, it's pretty simple. All it is is a welded piece <clears throat> pipe on the bottom there. And I don't know, it's maybe six feet tall. A T on the top so you can unscrew it. And just screw this down in there and then you can pick it up. Now I also managed to make uh, this, which is an old electrical wheel and from wiring and hooked it up to some two by fours and we're gonna hook it to the truck with a rope and pull this whole thing. So let me get on this. Here we are about to pull the well. Built this little rig here. And uh, this is all the electrical wire, old wheel. So this was some two by fours. I have this hooked into the pitless adapter and the wiring taken apart. So now I'm gonna pull that up and push it through. I probably have to take this bottom thing for the rope. Maybe I can get the whole thing hooked with the rope still on there. For... Right. Well, let's give this a shot here. I think we're ready. Do you want me to just creep or what? Yeah, just kind of idle it along and let's see what happens here. And see where this goes and what it does. Alright, tell me when to go. Alright, give it a little bit of gas there. Let me uh, look at 
Okay, it's going, hold on, hold on, hold on. That pulled it. That, that worked perfectly. Uh, you have the whole thing. Let's see what it's going to do when you get up there, though. Go real, real slow right now because i got to creep it over the wheel. I haven't hit the gas. Okay. Keep going. All right, hold on, hold on, hold on. Stop, stop. Hold on a minute. It's got to pull this whole tube over it now. Now's the trouble part. Let me see if I can get this over. Without breaking everything. Oh, man, it wants to go. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. All right, drive over a little bit. Go a little. Go. All right, it's working. Jig back into place a little bit. It's working though, it's working. So we want it to pull straight up here. Let me move this front thing. Well, this is actually working really well. It's pulling very well. And uh, just want to reposition things a little bit. All right, we got probably half of it out already. Cool. Now I'm, let's see. Here's what we have. That's down in there, pulling all that straight out of there, up around that, down through here, through our junk now. I'm using the golf cart. Go kart here is a block, and she's way up the driveway at this point. So, let me. All right, we're almost ready to try this again here. Okay. All right. So, what we need to do is we need to check and see if this pump is going to work here, and basically hook the wires apart. So if I hook it like that, maybe you can see. We're gonna hook all this together and see what happens. <clears throat> and the motor, if it's any good, I guess should kick on. Now this is 220, so be careful with this. You don't wanna to touch any of these. It may take a minute. All right. So it's working with black and red. Nothing with black and red and green. And, and nothing with red and green. Black and green and red and green don't do anything. All right, so the pump is running. After testing stuff and checking things out and going over the line, here's what we discovered. 
the wire chafed itself right through on the casing. It's kind of what I was afraid might be the case. And, uh, well, as soon as it did that, it wasn't getting 220 anymore. So, boom, cuts the pump out. So basically, and if you look right here at the screen one right next to it, it was doing the same thing, hitting the casing. So it was only a matter of time. Now, that's going to be fun. Wow, we're going to have to piece that. And that's going to be from here. It's almost all the way to the bottom of the well. That's 500 feet of wire. That's a big cost right there if you buy that. So hopefully we can... We're going to splice this, and it's not exactly what I want to do, but we're going to cut this and loop this and twist this all together so it can't pull itself apart. But, uh, oh man, what a pain in the butt. All right, so what we had to do here is uh, cut the wire. It was all destroyed. Add another piece of well wire. Wrap it, and now we're going to solder it together. Now you got to make sure that you put your heat shrink tubing in there beforehand. i got a piece here and a piece here. So when this is all done, we'll cover it with that. So let me get at the side of this one, and I can wrap it. I want to keep it nice and tight around this so it takes the tension off of that. And then we'll do this one last and then tie it all together. Okay, well, just soldered up. So now I uh, just slide this heat shrink tubing over that. And we warm that up, and that'll shrink right over it as well. Pretty cool stuff. Just using our propane, or map gas here. Propane torch. Don't get it too hot in one spot or it's going to uh, burn right through it. Go evenly around it. It'll shrink right up on you. Look at that. It's a beautiful thing right there. Waterproof. Ready to go. Now we'll do this side. Okay. Well, with this joint all wrapped up. So here's the other one. All twisted back together. Here's this one. We'll flux this up. Solder it. And then uh, cover it with that shrink wrap tube and what I'll do is I'll take uh, electrical tape and I'll wrap electrical tape around this whole set and I'm gonna do that a whole bunch of times on here I mean I did it a bunch of times already but uh, really being this deep of a well it does kick and slop around a lot down there it's all hooked up so uh, I went through and I strapped this every so feet and many feet fixed any splices wrapped it up good Fix the line. We're good to drop this pump back in this well. And I mean, I'm, I want to shower. It's, getting, it's a long day here. So um, I'm going to drop this down. I'm here by myself at the moment. So I'm going to put that over and start feeding it through. I have the truck at the top of the driveway. I'll hook to that as soon as it gets going. And hopefully all this will work, at least to get started until I get uh, the wife here to do the final last couple feet because it'll be real heavy. Uh, all this stuff is not light. I can tell you that. Got to weigh 50, 60, 70 pounds. And then water's eight pounds per gallon, so it adds up very quick. Okay. Aim for the hole best we can. All right, we got that started. Cool. It's really neat sitting like that. I hope you got the shot here of what this looks like swinging. So the pump is about to go in. And I'm going to pull this a little bit. I don't know how much it's going to go. We'll give it a shot or two and see. Oh, these gloves are nasty. Really? Kind of jerk me like that. That'll at least help start it. I want to say that once this gets going, it should feed pretty quick with its own weight. I want to be careful it doesn't feed too quick. a raster to clear get that going down in there it's nice and snug there we 
we go. There she is. Pitless adapter part with the arrestor there. There we go. Now we're past it. Should be smooth sailing from here. Should be. So I'm feeding 420 feet of line all by myself here. Pull this and set it from up there. Let's line up. You can see the wife way up there. The driveway's 300 feet, and we were uh, so we're we already have 150 feet into the well. And a lot of work. It just keeps going and going and going. All right. Well, we are almost there. She's in sight. You okay? You got prickered? Yeah. We're doing good. We're doing good. You're doing great. It's going to get heavy and it might still want to pull. Yeah, I can't imagine that hook's going to come through that go cart. Good. No All right. Um, Can we just grab the hook I now? have this at the moment. Why don't you go ahead and hook that like I said. Yeah. What we're doing is we have the chain at the end of this T. And that was hooked to the truck. We didn't need the truck to lower this. We thought we would use that. But we've been able to lower it to here. But we're going to hook the chain that was attached to the truck to just junk here this way. If for some reason we can't hold this, which it's pulling pretty good. It's got maybe 50 pounds of pull right now. But then uh, that's going to keep it from, you know, seeing Nara down the well. And oh man, I don't even want to know what you would do if this all took off down the well. Because if this is 420 feet down in a well, yeah, you're not getting it back. And I don't know how you would put another, it's all in the way of putting another pump down in there. How are we looking? God, I can't wait to take a shower. We're so close now. We have 10 more feet to go. How did you get the rope inside the hook? Women. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, boy. That was the T. Hey, baby. <clears throat> You're going to have to pass it to me as it's coming. So hold on to everything. Don't get sucked into this, but hold on to all this mess that you had before. Okay. I get gloves, she doesn't. I don't need those stinking gloves. All right, you have a phone and you have a, a you have your phone somewhere nearby, right? Yeah, in my pocket. Okay, because I might need you to shine a light so I can see exactly where to hook this. Because we have to line this up with that <clears throat> pitless adapter down there. All right, so go ahead and hand. Maybe get on the back end of that. You won't need it right yet. Oh, okay. Get on the back end of that T and get ready to pick it up. Hold it as high as you can. High as you can, babe. What are we hanging on here? Oh, oh shit. We're fighting each other. Why are we fighting each other? I have no idea. I'm not. Push that thing. Push it? Yeah, maybe you can. Come here, get over here and drop that, get over here. Okay. On the other side of this. Feed this down through this hole. It's very tricky. You're gonna have to twist it as you go. Be as quick as you can. Got it. Now you can look. Now you can look. Go ahead and look. <laughs> Maybe grab the GoPro for a minute. Let's see if we can see exactly where that hooks to with the pitless adapter down in there. You can see that little brass piece. That's what I had to line all this up to. What a pain. We should be so close to done. Hold this. So close to Oh my God, what a day. 
So we are done, just about done. Wires are hooked back together. I'm leaving this pitlet adapter hooked together just in case there's a problem. But uh, let's go in and try this. All right, the big test. Oh my God, I can't even tell you how awesome that is to see. I'm gonna wash my hands quickly just in case it stops running because I'm so dirty. Oh. Pressure's a little low at the moment, but it'll build since it it's running for more than, you know, a second. Wow, what a relief. Now we gotta let, don't drink this water for a little while. We gotta run it for a day or two. Get all the silt and sediment drug across the ground. So yeah, keep that in mind. When you do this, let your well run for a bit. There's people that'll throw a little bit of bleach in there, and uh, bleach is always good. It'll sterilize it slightly. And you wanna make sure you run your well for a while after that, so you clean all that out. But it won't hurt you well and it'll kill any bacteria in there and keep it from reproducing and once you kill your bacteria you should be good hope you learned something if you did at all please like and subscribe we could use all the help we can get and you have a great day and don't be afraid to solve all your problems and any questions comments well after a shower i'll be glad to answer them you have a great day